Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the second day of Test New Conference. Hope everyone is having a great day and you're all set for this exciting session ahead. I'm Manmol and I'll be your host for this session. Let me introduce you to Min, our amazing speaker for this session. Min is an industry veteran and the manager of engineering at AWS. With over 15 years of experience in this industry, she'd been driving force behind Amazon's commitment to top-notch product quality and customer satisfaction. In this talk, Balancing the Test Pyramid the AWS way, I, uh, Min will walk you through AWS Teams' innovative approach to testing. We will deep dive into how we can pull off a hybrid marvel where UI and API testing seamlessly unite to strike the perfect balance between coverage and efficiency. Before we move on, let's take care of one last thing. If you have any questions, feel free to head to the Q&A section in the right bar and add your questions over there. We'll be discussing them towards the end of the session. If we are short on time and some questions get unanswered, you can head over to the Lambda Test community we have a thread open for this talk and we'll be answering all your questions in that thread. Now, without further ado, please welcome Min on the stage. Over to you, Min. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, so let me quickly share my screen. Just one second. So can everyone see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, like Emo just uh, introduced, my name is Ming. So I'm an engineering manager from AWS. So I'm now based in Seattle, the United States. I'm super, super excited today to have this opportunity to share my stories with all of you at this conference. So yeah, I want to talk about more about the techniques or the frameworks, how my team to utilize the AWS services or the solutions to do our testing purpose. So yeah, super excited to share all this one and also want to collect more feedback from all of you to learn from each of you to see how we can make our work better in the future. All right, so... Let's move on. Yeah, this is my agenda quickly showing you through. I'm going to give a short introduction, what things we are going to do, and how we understanding about the UI testing, API testing, and what is our methodology or mindset to combine all things together. Followed on that, I want to show you a real case study. So that is a real project we are doing right now. So how we leverage the API UI together to provide our test coverage. And also I want to touch a little bit more on testing production. That is also my personally very favorite topics I want to do is how we should balance the testing in production uh, instead of the testing environments. And last to give you a few key summaries and key, uh, key takeaways. All right. So I think we can start. So probably you all know, I believe all of us, so the audience today, I believe a lot of you is the testing or a lot of knowledge in testing domain. So we all know that testing is very important. You probably don't know is 40% of the bugs reported in the post-production phases, usually that can be identified and addressed earlier if we have a good test coverage. So uh, we know if we want to deliver a high quality of the, the software or the services or product, yeah, whatever we call it today, uh, we want to make sure our customer satisfied with it, right? They like it. They love to use it. So testing is a very important part of it. We all know that uh, I don't want people to think about testing as kind of an add-on on the top of the development or slow down the process sometimes. Uh, if we have it in the right way to fit into our deployment process. We sometimes can accelerate. We can help the whole development cycles moving faster. 
and also with a good quality. So that is all the, the, the ground we want to make sure we are on the same page. We all know testing is super important. But we also know if we want to achieve a comprehensive test coverage, most of the times we have a lot of challenges. So first, uh, you may know diverse test scenarios. So when we think about testing an application, so we may think about a lot of potential test scenarios. Sometimes it can be endless, you know. So we uh, think about edge cases. We think about the typical user scenarios. We also need to think about, oh, some scenarios is unanticipated. So the breadth of what needs to be tested can be doubting. So each of the scenarios, they comes with their own preconditions, the data combinations, test steps, and expected outcomes. So all that makes things very complicated. So another challenge we all know, evolving code base. So today, most of the teams using Agile, right? So we all know the code, the code base is always evolving. So we have new features adding for each of the sprints or, or, or every day. So we have bug fixes. We have some underlying the infrastructure change. So all these things, all these alterations may make our existing tests sometimes become obsolete. So we require some regular updates, maintenance to maintain its relevance. So that will uh, never have a lot of challenge or a lot of um, additional efforts for each of the org, if each of the team, you should think about that, how to have your dynamic, you know, the code basis and your dynamic, the testing to fit into the same pace. So integration is also very complex. So in today's software world, we all know that. So we have the microservice driven environment. The applications often, you know, depend on each other. There's uh, so many uh, multiple interactive services. So we want to ensure one service working. That is a one story. But if we want to ensure everything seamlessly working together as a, as a whole big good components or big integrated environment and deliver to our customers, that is a totally different story. So we all know time and resource is also another constraint. So given, let's say, if we have the unlimited resource, unlimited time, of course, we can have a very, very good test coverage to cover everything. But we all know in reality, that is impossible. So every team have their own deadlines. We have the limited resource, we have limited headcounts. So how we find the balance between the dips of the coverage and the time to the market is always a big topic for each of the teams. You should find out the balance point. That is not easy for sure. You need to trade out something, but it's really depend on what is the most of value your team, your August driven, uh, driving to that direction, then you probably will make the different version, uh, decision team by team. So yeah, that is uh, something we also see is a big challenge. The last one, but not the least one, of course, we all know the menu versus automation. So we all know automation can help to accelerate the testing. Uh, but if uh, I highly suggest is if your software, your application is really used by humans, by end customers. So this type of the product still needs some menu or exploration or intuition of the human to check it out. So it's really depending on what type of the software or application you deliver. We need to decide what to automate and what to test manually to ensure eventually we have a very good coverage. So, but that is a challenge for sure. You need to make the decision, the trade-offs. So people need to use your, your, your talents to really think out what is the best plan for your org. So all these challenges is really comes to one topic is we need a good test strategy. And this test strategy is a specific for your own software, for your org, for your own team. And depending on the dependencies, and the resources and how the priorities of your features. And of course, we need a very solid, good tools and frameworks to help you to implement all these things together. So that is a lot of things we need to consider and definitely it's not easy.
All right. So yeah, let's move on to the concept of UI testing and API testing. Of course, I know everyone here is an expert, so I probably will not spend too much time on this one. Just to quickly touch it. Uh, UI testing is a user interface test. We all know that. So this is a focus on interaction between the users and the applications. So like I just mentioned, if your software, your application is used by end customers, by humans, so UI testing is super important. We want to make sure the interface behaves as, as it is, as expected. So that is a really important one. We want to ensure our customers have a good experience. So that's why uh, to satisfy your customer, to delight your customer, this is very important one. So why we do that, like I just mentioned, so backend uh, functional is a crucial, but the front end, yeah, this is really the first layer you direct interact with your customer. So if the UI has some issues, you probably know the entire experience will fall apart. So UI testing is really help us to, you know, to make sure all these integrations, actions worked seamlessly, and then that will deliver a good, to a better user satisfaction. So what type of the UI testing? Again, I just uh, quickly touch it because uh, we, uh, we we can find this information more from the, all the different public uh, forums. So we have exploration testing, just really actively to explore and this application and really rely on the intuitions. So we have the usability testing to make sure, yeah, how ease of the user from user perspective. And we have a navigation testing. We want to ensure all the links, uh, the buttons, the navigation elements on this page uh, work as it is. And also capability testing to make sure we have always deliver the consistent experience across the different devices. It could be mobile, it could be your laptop, from browsers, from your mobile phones, and the different resolutions. We want to ensure everything is consistently the same behavior to the customers and the people easy to use it. Okay, so API testing. So again, quickly touch it. API testing is the back end. So it is called as the application programming interface. So usually, yeah, like, like the name of it, it is act as a bridge. So it really allow our automation, uh, sorry, our software to communicate. So API testing, we always want to ensure this bridge is a stable, is a secure, is a connected with the UI level or the other, the other uh, services uh, or uh, dependent to work together all uh, in a good way. So why we do this? So we talk about why we do the UI testing. So UI testing checks the application front end. So API testing is crucial to verify the back end. So we want to make sure the data integrity, the performance, and how is the application handle the expected load or how is it integrated with other systems. So all that can be covered by the API testing. So again, the type of the APIs, so we have a functional test, we have a low test, security test, integration test. So all these things is really can do from the API level to help us to verify the system behaviors under heavy load, the system behavior correctly from the potential threats, if some security uh, attacks to the system, how they handle that. So all that can be done in this way. So um, we talk about the UI, we talk about the API, and also maybe people ask why we cannot do everything from API level, why we cannot do everything from UI level. So API is really, so you can imagine if the application has an API, has a UI, so API is always one level below. So that is not a real end-to-end -end flows, but the UI is a real end-to-end -end flows like a real customer. But we cannot test everything from there because we talk about a lot of the, uh, the, the challenges, time consuming. It's really a high cost to maintain the UI test. So we want to make sure how to balance that. 
uh, to something covered from UI, something covered from API. So like, for example, API can always help us to validate the backend and the UI can always help us to ensure the user experience. So we combine all together so we can ensure we achieve a good full stack validation. We can um, fetch uh, catch the front end and the back end inconsistencies, but in the same time, we can eliminate the redundancies. So if it's covered by the UI, we don't need to cover from API or in the same thing. If we cover from API, we don't need to cover from the UI. So that is how we can improve the overall software quality and reliability. Okay. So this is my favorite part. So we talked a lot about all this introductions, the concept. So let's see a good case study. So this is a real project uh, we are doing right now. But of course, I just uh, made some changes uh, to some of the components to make it more generic. It's a generic scenario so everyone can understand it. So let's say um, this is a simple flows. I would separate into two two critical flaws for the user to do the work. So first, the user will log in <clears throat> with a credential to a web portal. So the user will provide the username, password. So if everything correct, okay, they successfully log in to a user management page. Of course, if it's a login failed, then we should go to the different route. So once it's uh, succeed, then they go to this user management page. We also need to check if this user has the permission to create a new guest user or not. If they have the permission, then this user is able to fill in all the required information. So for example, when you create a new user, you, you probably need to give the username, the pass, another uh, username, password, or some user information. And then you click button to submit. But again, if everything is correct, the required field is there, and then you can succeed, create a user successfully, or otherwise it, it will error out. So yeah, this is, a, uh, I would say, not, not complicated flows. It's just a normal flows. Uh, a lot of people may see this. So how we do the testing for this kind of a flows from UI level and API level. So if we look at, so that's why I say I want to split into the two critical flows. So one is the user logging. So the user logging, how we are going to test it. So from the UI perspective, I only check the visible field on that UI login page. So for example, what is the input fields? Is the visible or not? Is a responsive or not? Is a login button trigger the uh, authentication process successfully or not. And also, of course, I want to have a happy path in that UI flow as well. So the whole end-to-end -end flows, user is able to enter username, enter password, click the button, and then log in successfully. And then the whole information should surface back to the user's I can see it, oh, I'm successfully, and I can navigate to the different page. So that is something I do want to cover from the UI testing, but the rest, let's cover from the API level. So we all know that the test edge cases, the combinations of different input. So how can I input the wrong username, password, right? How can I input uh, the special characters, or empties, or all these the uh, the character is totally a long strands uh, of the strings. So all that I would suggest to cover from the API level. So API level, we can do the whole set of the data validation. So given the different input data, what is expected output? That is the perfect scenario for the APIs. So we can use the data-driven methodologies in the give or config file for all the possible edge cases, scenarios you want to cover them fit into that. And also we can check the service validation properly. Uh, the backend service is to handle everything correct, is to return the correct error code or succeed code. So all that things should be handled by that. So this is how we combine together. So we don't need to cover everything from the UIs, but we can have a very comprehensive data validation from the API level and the UI API combined together is a good, you will have a high confidence. I almost have covered everything. I'm pretty confident this workflow should work as expected. 
So the same thing for the, the second flow, create a guest user. So again, from the UI perspective, we just validate the UI page. Yes, if every necessary field present, if it's the button is uh, working as expected, can clickable to not gray out. And also uh, when we fit some information into the different uh, field, we want to make sure the feedback information returned to the UI page is uh, correct. So that is something we should pay attention from the UI level, but the rest that's handled in the API level, like the combinations of the different input data, is that correctly sent to the servers? If the server can store the data properly, the server can update the database or uh, create new entries in the database correctly. And if it's uh, uh, the right permissions set to discuss the user. So all that validation can happen in the backend. So that is how we think about the whole case studies, UI and API, how we should combine together. And then eventually we can have a very good test coverage. So yeah, to a little bit of summary about that, like I just mentioned, we have a two critical flows, user login and the guest user creation. And the UIs, we, of course, I would suggest a happy pass. That is an important one to do the whole end-to-end -end flow validation from there. And then other than that, we only focus like the visual elements, the feedback messages service to this page. And APIs do the whole backend authentication backend creation, updating, and then to combine all together, that would be a good one. So this is scenarios is more help us to make sure uh, UI has their own focus. API can also have their own focus, but that's combined together, they can guarantee a very good uh, to secure the user experience and provide a very good test coverage. All right. So one further steps into it, I also want to share with you how we do that for user login flows. So like in my case study in the previous slides, uh, I just uh, give a simple examples, how to explain uh, how to do the high level um, UI and API pass strategy. So what things should consider UI, what things should consider in API. But in the reality, we all know that uh, user login Username, password sometimes is not secure enough. So more and more the enterprise customers, they will use additional check. So for example, MFA. MFA is a multi-factor authentication. Authentication. So it is a, a security mecha mechanism, you know, it requires the user to provide two or more verification factors to gain access to the resource. So I want to extend to our case studies. Actually, in our project, we need to handle is the user login when the MFA is enabled. So how to do that? So MFA is really designed, you know, to provide additional layer of the security. So that will make it harder for unauthorized users when you gain access to the system. You even you have the user password, you need to have additional security. If you cannot pass that one, it's, what, it's your failure. So that is a kind of a harder for the unauthorized user. It also makes it harder for us to do the automation, you know, because in this case study, it will send email verification as part of the login. And then this will add a lot of challenges when we do the automation. So for example, we need to think about how to access the email account, how to find the email body and passing the code from the email and feed that number back to the automation code and then complete our login flows. So it's really um, complicated uh, things. And we really, especially for, for us, when we do the automations, we definitely don't want to access the third party um, email servers and or third party tools to really gain the, 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 the verification code. So that is kind of against our internal security uh, guidance. So that's why we really need to figure out our own way how to handle all that. So Amazon provided, uh, AWS provided some services. We definitely leveraged that one to do in this case. So one thing is the uh, Amazon Route 53. 
So you probably, all, of course, you can yeah, uh, find all these services from AWS documentation is as a public one. So Route 53, it, you can imagine it's a DNS, so name domain name system uh, web service is provided by AWS. So basically it is uh, to, you know, to translating, translating your human readable domain names into an IP address. So basically it's more like a bridge. So we leverage that one, we configure it uh, into, what, what in our testing web portals, we configure it to any of the email sending to the email address, we will use the Route 53 to forward it to our internal, so our own simple email services. So simple email services also a uh, cloud-based uh, service provided by AWS. So it's, it's, config it's configured by ourselves. So we basically can configure it to, instead of to send email to the email account received by the customers, by the client side, we can configure this email to send to the specific S3 buckets. So that is a kind of like a file we put it into the S3 buckets. So again, we do have the API to access S3 buckets. So we can programmatically to uh, trigger if that files uh, in the S3 bucket, then we can go to there and grab the latest file and pass in the code from the body of the email and then grab the code and fit into our automation framework. So that is a very, uh, very good um, solid way and a very, um, let's say, um, compatible way. So we can combine the MFA configurations and make our own internal testing framework. And, but in the same time, we try our best to, to simulate the customers, you know, to behavior, to close to the customer experience as much as possible. Because we do want to make sure we try our best to integrate everything to test our web portal. And all this setup will help us to achieve that. So this is one example, uh, I would say a simple example I want to share to this audience. So you can feel free uh, to, to look more AWS documentations to figure out what is the best thing uh, to achieve to fit your requirements. But of course, yes, if you have any question, you can feel free to connect me. I'm happy to, to, to share you more information about that. All right, so this is a case study we are doing. And the last piece, but not the least one, of course, I do want to share is the canary, synthetic canary, how we doing in the uh, production uh, testing. So again, uh, th this is the uh, public services provided by AWS. So it's a CloudWatch synthetic canary. So there's a lot of documentations publicly. You can easily to find it, the detailed tutorials and how to use it. So I just want to show you what is the output for this one. So canary, um, to give you a quick, quick context of that, if you don't know what is a canary. So a canary is a script that runs very regularly to monitor your endpoints and your services. So basically it can simulate your user actions. So it could be the UI, it could be the API, yeah, depend on your uh, requirements. So basically us, we just uh, simulate the basic UI scenarios, like uh, we simulate the user login and then load the key pages of the system, so that's it. Because it's a testing production, we don't want to have it very complicated or try out all the different combinations of the edge cases. So this is more like to ensure if your system is healthy in the production. Because sometimes we all know system is running there, but if there's no customer traffic, you probably don't know if your system already done. Unless there's a customer after a long time, they log in and access your server, you know, oh, why is not working? And eventually we know that, oh, customer complain, your server is done, um, but that is already too late. So it probably already done for the whole day or for a few days. So that's why we introduced this canary. So this uh, regularly running in the backend. So it will give us the signals if any of the data points or any of the tests failed at some of the time intervals, Mm, they will give us uh, a warning. So what we do is they will auto-cut tickets to us and page our 
uh, uncle engineers to see, oh, your server has some health issues. It's already done and no response to this uh, request, no response to this request, then we will we probably will quickly jump into the system, identify what is the problem. So basically, um, this is more like the kernel will ensure if everything is working, operating smoothly in the production. So uh, we leverage the synthetic canary. So that's a cloud or synthetic canary in our testing environment. So we have all these things monitor our service um, house. So you can see we build up an availability dashboard. We also build up a latency dashboard. So basically we use it to calculate the availability if for example, our availability should be 99% above. If it's a drop to the threshold, then we will be notified and then we should quickly jump in and help the customers to, ahead of the time, yeah, help the customers to uh, figure out the issue and the, fi uh, and, and the fix the issue to make sure it will not have a bigger impact to our end customers. So yeah, this is, the, I feel like is a very, very important one so when we talk about testing, we always think about before lunch, right? We have the UI testing, API testing, all these testings together to ensure we have a good quality deliver. deliver. But once the software launched, so probably we don't do too much. We just kind of stay away and working on the next project. But in the reality is any of the project or any of the software launch uh, the post launch is equally important because that is exactly our customers interact every day. So we want to make sure it's operationally good and we have a very high efficient way to, to, to operate this system, to serving our customers, to make sure that is uh, continuously is the high quality there. So that is uh, how this synthetic cranery will help us to do in this way to give us a good loop, you know, to maintain and uh, make the whole system running as healthy as possible. So this is uh, the case study for synthetic canary. That's the next one. Yeah, so I think this is a close to the end of my presentation. So I just want to quickly summarize the key takeaways uh, what I talk about today. So we talk about the comprehensive test coverage, of course. So we know uh, the applications, uh, we have, uh, we need a combination of the UI and API to make sure we have a holistic coverage. So one cannot work uh, optimally without each other. So both the front end interaction and back end data processing is equal important. So we should make sure we cover both. So integration is very important as well. So the Today's software is always complicated, especially a lot of things on top of the uh, cloud. Yeah, we have so many things, dependencies, probably we even don't know. So how we are going to combine this uh, integration to make sure we have a good insight about the whole application behaviors to ensure the data flows, the visual elements, the user interactions, all these things should consider together. And again, synthetic canary testing is a kind of a post-launch. We ensure we monitor the application. We simulate the user behaviors. We capture the issues before they actually impact our user. So that is how we can help you improve our operational excellence. So we want to ahead of the potential issues, you know, by we can regularly simulating the user's behaviors and we can identify all these errors or bottlenecks ahead of time. So everything we build right now is on top of the AWS ecosystem. So AWS provides a lot of tools. So they provide the testing framework as well, uh, but also like the Route 53, uh, email services, CloudWatch, uh, S3 buckets. So all the things is now leveraged by our team to implement the solution. But we know there's uh, much, much more there so we can see how we can design our work to ensure the whole test framework is robust and flexible. So yeah, to closing out my presentation today, so I just want to say balanced test coverage is not just a you know, ticking 
the checklist. So it's more about how you can understand your application from inside out. So we really want to deep inside, dig into it to understand how is these things working together and then ensure they are robust, user friendly, and that that is a, a whole uh, holistic views about the whole applications, not just one feature, one component, one module. So by leverage the tools and the framework and also the hybrid approach. So I think we we are all propelled and we should have a good good way, you know, to to solve all of our problems. All right. I think that's all for my presentation today. And thank you so much to spend this time to listen to me, to share the stories. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions if you have any. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Mint. We have a few questions here. I'll just show them on the stage. Erin mm -hmm. here asks, uh, why is API testing not more important when the UI won't work without it, the backend can work without the UI in a microservice-based architecture. Yes, that is a very good question. So like I just mentioned, so it's really depend on um, what is a software, or what is the application your team or your are providing. So if this software or this application is used eventually by the humans, so for example, Amazon.com, Right when we testing that, we know there's a, so many thousands, of millions of people use that app, use that web browsers to interact with Amazon.com to to shopping to buy something. So that is why we say UI is important because UI is really the interface user interact with it. So they don't care what is the backend looks like. They don't know that. They just know oh when I click this button. I cannot place my order. I don't know what happened, but I know it's not working. So I'm really disappointed about that. So that is something, yeah, we want to cover from the UI side. But of course, you're right. If there's a lot of software or product right now, the end customers is not a human. It could be machine. It could be other services. That is a perfect scenario. Yes, you do want to make sure you focus your testing on the API level or backend level or whatever, the interface exposed from your specific applications. And then we need to make sure the good integration of that. So uh, I would say it's not say UI is not important or API is not important. So it's not saying which one is more important. It's really not, it's really looking for what is your scenario? What is your target system you want to test then you probably have a better answer, which one is important and which one need more coverage from which level to cover it. Yeah, I, I hope I answer your question. Awesome. We have uh, one more. Oh, Yogendra asks, what are some strategies or techniques used by AWS to ensure an optimal balance between integration and unit tests? Yeah. This is also a very good question. So in today's presentation, yeah, I um, purposely didn't touch too much about the unit test because unit tests are right now. So yeah, I think probably most of the orgs have the, the same thing. So unit tests, I really want the developers to own this ownership because when you write the code, you should also write your unit test, right? So unit tests should focus on exactly your components. So that is why it's a unit test. Just on that unit, you need to make sure your functionality is working as expected. So usually unit test, we will mock up all the dependencies. So just uh, don't actually interact with the outside, just isolate it yourself. Everything we mock up. So if you need the dependency one to give your data, yeah, I can mock up it. If you need a dependency two, to feed your data, yes, I can mock up it. So that is something we isolated for the unit test to make sure your specific code is working as it, as it is. But how we really know this is integration with the outside, the real services, that is really depend on the integration test. So integration test, a lot of times, like we just talked about, 
uh, UI testing, AP testing. I personally would also think all that is a part of the integration test. So integration test, you can level by level. So UI probably is the last level to the whole end-to-end -end flows, the integration is working as expected, but we can still do some separation. So we can integration one, you know, we probably have a 10 dependencies. You just uh, pass a one dependency, but the other nine, we still mock up. So that is a one of the approach, but at one level up, we probably will also think about if we want to make sure in the real environments, how is it interact with all the dependencies that is a probably is already the last level you need to do. So the same thing, the different levels, you need to think about what is your purpose. So what is your testing purpose to test? So are you want to specific on some of the logics to make sure that part integrates correctly with the different things? You may have a different strategy. So that is why um, I don't have a standard or a kind of a template to fit for everything. It's really case by case and really depend on what is your functionality, what is the product your audience provided. But generally speaking, if you want me to share is, I would say we need to define the different layers and then make a clear uh, target, what things you want to test. And then you probably will have a good strategy for that. All right, I guess we have uh, some some time for a last question. Uh, and yep. it's a pretty interesting <clears throat> one. Uh, Evans asks, uh, how does AWS handle performance testing and optimization for applications hosted on its cloud infrastructure? Yeah, I think this is a very, very good question and a very challenging one. <clears throat> so what I can what I can show you is uh, so it depends on the, again what is your purpose of your testing so if we so aws provided infrastructures right i believe each of the aws infrastructure teams they will have their own performance testing so probably on their purpose to do the performance testing they really just uh, simulate oh this traffic or this capacity on top of this infrastructures how is the behavior how is it expected you know, the customer should expect about the behavior, they probably will focus on that. But for the different application teams on top of it, so for example, I am the teams, I'm, I'm the customer of the AWS Infras. I use their services. I use their, the knowledges to build my own applications. So my testing purpose will probably focus more on my product. So I want to make sure my web portal on this AWS infras and under this load, it can behave as expected. So when I see the bottlenecks for my application, my web portals, so it could be, oh, it is AWS infras has some bottleneck that limited the capacity can serve my customer. Or it could be my web portal applications, some logic code, they are not optimized to handle all this concurrent connections and all this load and the serving my customer properly. So that is really something uh, we need to dive deep into it. So, it, and also it depends on which level you are. If it's the infras level, yeah, they probably have their own troubleshooting debugging way and then define the proper performance test, the proper load on top of it to run their code logic. But if it's a customer, the application service like us, yeah, we have a totally different strategy, right? So we can define our workload, our uh, the traffic on top of it. And also we need to do more troubleshooting because we are on the one level above. So we need to make sure the bottleneck is from where? Is it from the infras level? We probably will connect it to the infras team. Hey, we see this issue, we see this bottleneck and we need to work together to figure out what is the problem, what is the approach, or what is the fixes you can help us. But if it's just us, so we probably connect to our own development teams. Hey, we see this bottlenecks, right? And we need to figure out what is the best way. You need to optimize the code somewhere to handle our workload. So yeah, this is very complicated, and especially right now, uh, so many applications build on top of the cloud infrastructure. So it's really make things even complicated. So. I highly encourage you for each of the teams to figure out what is the root cause 
of the performance or what is the main target you want to target to test your performance, then you probably can have a good define of your test strategy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Min, for this insightful session. I'm sure everybody would walk away with a better understanding of testing and how do they test their own applications. Uh, to everyone attending the session, we would be hosting all of our recorded sessions on YouTube. So you can go back and listen to them again and share with your peers as well. Before we move on to our next session, we have a 15 minutes networking break lined up for you. I encourage all of you to visit our partner booths during the breaks where you can engage, connect and exchange ideas that drive innovation forward. Happy testing and have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.